Alrighty guys, welcome back to the next episode of the Container Lab build. Uh, in the previous episode we got this door opening cut, we got a lot of welding done on the roof. Uh, you can kind of see through here there's no light visible through there. So that's awesome. So what we picked up today is a plasma cutter. This set us back a pretty penny, about 1600 bucks. But you know they sell some at Harbor Freight that are about 900 bucks. But uh, essentially we wanted to buy right the first time. So this is a Thermal Dynamics uh, Plasma Torch Cutmaster 40. Uh, here's all the accessories, the torch, ground clamp, all that good stuff. Um, so we'll get that out of here. And here you see the machine. This thing is pretty light, easy to pick up with one hand. And uh, there we go. That's uh, that's the plasma cutter. So this is what we're going to be using for cutting these walls out. Uh, I tried the oxyacetylene setup here. Uh, that didn't cut so well. Someone suggested using propane uh, oxygen instead of the acetylene, and that was worse. So uh, scrapping that idea, we got the plasma cutter, even though it was a little costly. But we have the power cord over here, this one right here, the black one. Uh, that's fed from our main electrical room. It's a beautiful sunny day out, so uh, we're good to go on power. Uh, that three-in-one generator uh, I was using, it broke in the last video. And uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty much gonna get set up and uh, start cutting these walls out. I went ahead and did a test. I'm using a flap wheel on my angle grinder and ground down this section. So we're gonna have to grind this whole uh, length of this container down like this and it's gonna be kind of time-consuming to do that but I've got a real nice thick uh, beefy uh, flap wheel on here uh, it should last a long time so a couple of those and um, we only really need to grind down the floor the ceiling when we frame it in we have this structural member that protrudes down that was the piece we were welding in the last videos um, we're essentially going to need to bring our framing over to about here and then have a filler kind of transition piece. So uh, once we get the wall cut out, we'll be, have a better idea of what's going to have to happen there and uh, we can plan accordingly. I did do some math on how many studs and uh, sheets of OSB and insulation uh, it's going to take and got that priced out. So I got a quote now from Home Depot for about $2,700 to frame in and insulate this whole thing. But I really like having the doors on opposite sides. There's a nice draft through here, and uh, this will be real nice. That environmental chamber I made a brief video about, I'll put a card in the top corner. That's gonna go right here. We're gonna have essentially double doors here, and that way all the heat from that environmental chamber can go right out the back outside. And uh, once this whole thing's framed in, we're probably gonna put a couple of mini split units on here. But uh, we're a ways away from that. Just kinda wanted to, you know, give you guys a little bit more insight onto the progress. So, all right, without further ado, I'm gonna get this plasma cutter uh, set up and ready to go. And uh, for compressed air for the plasma cutter, I'll show you guys. I've got our uh, Kohler air compressor. After our experience with that generator, I sure do hope that this thing doesn't fall apart next. So I'm almost tempted to just get rid of all this equipment and uh, sell it off. I mean, we've already had a little bit of a problem with this. They have a uh, split wheel on this uh, at the front and the nuts already have come loose. And uh, it's kind of lost its air and fell apart on us. So that's kind of already been uh, a little bit of a headache. But it runs, it starts. You know all that good stuff so uh, we'll see as we use it for the plasma cutter how this thing uh, holds up and uh, I'll keep you guys updated alrighty so one quick thing I just cobbled together is a filter dryer dealio for the air compressor uh, I have this set up just so it could go in line when needed uh, I didn't want to permanently install this on that uh, wheelbarrow air compressor because then if we need it somewhere you know out in the field and we don't need dry clean air uh, we could take this off, that way this doesn't get broken, because these are usually pretty brittle. So let's take this and go uh, get hooked up to the air compressor, and we'll be ready to cut. Okay, so let's just say I love this plasma cutter, 
and uh, I'm definitely glad we spent the couple extra bucks and uh, bought right the first time. Uh, I've already taken out probably eight feet of the wall and uh, this section over here, uh, we already had taken out before the plasma cutter and uh, I don't know how we would have done this without it. The oxyacetylene wouldn't really make a clean cut all the way through. Uh, the plasma cutter, I was literally able to grab the torch and I pretty much took the torch and drug it up here along this top rail and uh, it cut right through real easy. And then like, let's say I wanted to cut here, I'd just pull the trigger and drag it down the corrugation and that was uh, real easy. The nice part about this one is it's not a high frequency start type unit. Typically the high frequency start type units, you can't touch the tip against the metal because it'll short out and you'll lose your arc. Um, so buying, you know, a quality unit is going to end up performing, you know, how, how you would expect for the price. I hope that makes sense. But either way, yeah, we're going to keep cutting this wall out. Uh, one interesting thing to take note of is this piece of square tube. It looks like maybe it's a two by two or a two by three. Uh, not exactly sure. But on this container that we're standing in right now, it protrudes down. Uh, let's jump through the doorway to the other side and you'll see this one looks like it maybe has some like half inch, maybe solid uh, material there. It doesn't look like it's a box tube. So this will cut off right at the ceiling, kind of like we we're doing on the other one. And then that difference in elevation, I'm not super concerned about because when we frame in our ceiling, we'll stop that wall at that structural member and we'll stop this one and then the gap in between the plywood ceiling we're going to put in uh, will cover that gap. So if you didn't catch that or it didn't make sense, don't worry. We're going to be showing you here in the series uh, coming up later on. But uh, until then, uh, we're going to keep cutting out this wall and uh, update you as we go. Okay guys, so welcome back, and uh, we got a bunch of the wall cut out. This is awesome. This is about 8, maybe 10 feet, and uh, it's some serious progress. We have more on the, the side closest to the camera cut out, uh, but I'm out of light. I'm wearing tinted uh, safety glasses, that way the plasma, the light from the plasma arc doesn't harm my eyes. And uh, when those are on, when it's this dark, it's almost impossible to see. And uh, it's been a long day. I'm not as uh, smooth and I'm kind of shaky and there's just a lot going on. So I'm gonna call it a day. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you haven't seen previous parts in the series, be sure to check out the playlist. There'll be a card on this video right now. Other than that, guys, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you get uh, notifications when we upload future videos. Thanks for watching again, guys. See you in the next video. Bye now.